I'm back. Hopefully the last time on this one. Well, what are we covering this time? Well, I've got a piece of paper. I thought I'd do it the easy way and just get Fender's instructions. Yeah, how do I set up my Stratocaster guitar properly? It sounds like a, an idea that does. I'm sure that many of us have guitars that are set up incorrectly or not according to what Fender say. And I have to be honest, <laughs> I'm one of them. Uh, so whether I'll follow this is another story. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you the basic idea of what I do or what I've done and go from there. But if you want to find out the truth, rather than me running through hours and hours on a video, if you go to the Fender website and then Fender Product Support, then Product Care, you've got these, uh, how many pages is there? There's at least six or eight pages of it, and it covers everything you could ever want. I didn't even know they had that on there, but, but they do. Yeah, so if you've got to this stage, I absolutely recommend you pull this document down. Yeah, makes sense. Now I have already done a lot of work on this off camera before I got to this video so I'm not going to go and spend all day going through every last bit and oh this is what I got type of thing. I'll give you a clue but mine might be actually narrower if there's a measurement than, than there is on there. That's what I would say. But of course the setup of the Stratocaster, the setup of your guitar really at the end of the day as long as it's set up so it plays right uh, for you that is who cares i'm sure if you went to srv and said hey how's your guitar set up it wouldn't be like well oh, like fender said <laughs> probably not okay well where do we start well <laughs> you could do this stuff a number of ways and uh, i have my own way of doing things and the fender sheet down there on the floor has its own way but what I tend to do is the first thing I want to do is make sure this neck uh, has the right amount of relief on it and uh, you know not too much that way and not too much that way and how I've often checked it is put my finger down on the 12th like this put a kappa on one and have a measure on about the 7th of the 8th fret and you should have about, uh, I think about five thou, you know, feeler gauges in there. And uh, if it's wrong, well, you don't have to start faffing about with truss rods, which is either on the end there, on the end there. But in the case of this one, it's on the end and on the side, so I can get away with a little bit. But this one actually is fine. <laughs> I didn't have to do a thing, believe it or not. It's just the way it is. Now on a, uh, a new neck like this, I mean, Warmoth used to have some horrible necks. <laughs> I know, because I bought them. I, was, I must have been the one. But they've improved massively over the last few years. So much so to where you could almost get away without doing anything. But what I'd recommend is you get one of them fret rocker things. And if, if you haven't got one, you want something that's straight, that's about this long. And it'll rock between two or three frets and if you find any uh, that have got problems well then it's a question of flatting them off which is hard work and I'm not even going to explain it you'd have to go and look on the internet for that but but that's what you do uh, to get it right this one again I haven't over the last few necks I've had from Walmart I haven't really done anything at all it's always been well, I've had the odd truss rod adjustment, but it's always been pretty much, uh, pretty much simple. And this one's been very simple because I didn't adjust the truss rod. And the frets seem to be fine to me. What can I say? <laughs> Tell me it's luck. I don't think it is. Now you could also uh, check the nut height up here. You know, how high the strings are off the nut. But once again, I had the nut fitted before I bought the neck, and uh, it's uh, one of those Yavana nuts. In case you haven't seen one, uh, there's one on the screen right now. Very weird neck, uh, nut for the neck, but uh, everything's right, and uh, that's why I bought that. Yeah. Now, moving on a bit further, 
when you get to the, the sort of string height that you want, well, I have to say, it varies dependent on what the neck radius is. In the case of the fender thing, this one, for example, they say, oh, with a 7.25 neck radius, on the base side, you should measure 5.64, and on the treble side, 4.64. Yeah. So 2 mil this side, and 1.6 mil that side. Yeah. What can you say? Now, there's a way of doing this. Uh, it says here, da, 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 da. first check tune in a 6 inch ruler, measure the distance between the bottom of the strings and the top of the 17th fret. There. So you measure them. And you get them uh, different heights dependent on the uh, neck radius. And again, 9.5 to 12 inches, 464 is on the bass and 464 is on the treble. And the same on a 15 to 17 inch neck radius, 464 is on the bass side and 364 is on the treble side. So you can see there's a variance and you get your little ruler and you're in here, right there, and you're measuring the, the heights which you can adjust down there. Yeah, seems like a plan. It's not really rocket science. I'm not getting all through it because, well, I've done other videos with it and you can go and have a look down there to the link to the strats that I've done. And uh, you see what I did. It saves hours than faffing around doing this. But there is another thing, uh, once you've got them right. Uh, there's also the pickup height. And they talk in here again. What do they say? Six inch ruler. Good ruler with gun. It says here. Depress all the strings at the last fret using a six inch ruler. Measure the distance from the bottom of the first and sixth strings to the top of the pole piece. Good rule of thumb is the distance should be greatest at the sixth string and closest at the first string. Well, it should. Follow measurement guides in the chart below. We've got a chart. This should be good. Or not. And there they are. And it, it's different for different pickups, by the way. Well, these ones are, well, these are a vintage style. And on this one, it says on the base side, it should be 664s. Yeah, so you're in there measuring like so. And on that side, on the treble side, I think it's uh, 564s. Me, well, I adjust them till it sounds good. That's what I tend to do. I, I tend not to do that. Yeah. And lastly, we've got this thing called intonation. Now, what that's all about is it's in tune now because I've tuned it. But if I was to play up here somewhere, well, you, you're pressing the string down. So the string length's changed. But the intonation is like bringing the guitar in tune when you're playing up here. That's the easy way of thinking about it. And what you have to do, well, let's show you this one first. There's the tuner, and what I would do with this intonation thing is do it with the guitar like this. Not lying flat on there, which I did do on some occasions, but what you've got to be careful of, you ain't flat on there, you'll get the intonation right, and you pick it up, and it isn't. It's really weird. Uh, so you need to be careful about that. So if we turn this tuner on, and we make sure we're in tune, which is always worth the effort, I think you can see it from there. Yeah, so when it's in tune, you should then be able to go bottom E and at the 12th fret. And it should be the same. You see, that's pretty much, pretty much the same. And you do that for every string. And you'll find that yours will be out. There's no question about that. I have already checked this and I know it's correct. But what I would say is, if you've got it flat, if it's flat, you need to shorten the string. Yeah, which makes the string obviously shorter. <laughs> Silly me. So, if you screw it so that the bridge goes that way, that will make the flat note 
on the 12th fret, higher. And then you do another retune every time until it's all back as it should be. There it is. I hope you can see that. Yeah, and then you should be able to go more nearly. <laughs> finicky at the bottom sometimes yeah I could adjust that but it's that near it's probably not worth doing so it's an example of the uh, the intonation so remember on this one if it's flat shorten the string and if it's sharp lengthen the string sound a little bit that way away can't see it on camera away that way yeah <laughs> Okay then, well that's sort of really uh, where you want it to be. And by the way, uh, with this I had the, the boost and all the rest turned off, you know what I mean, when you're doing this stuff. But it, it should now be intonated right. It's got a real nice uh, lowish uh, feel to it. it. Everything just seems right, it just, just seems to... Sound right. Very flat, no hum, nothing. Very nice. And notice that it's sort of all clean in the little amp over there, so you can get a good idea of where you're at. One of the things I always check, uh, just for the info of it, just while I'm here, is I always listen to these notes at the top end. Once I've got this uh, string height. Should be no choking off or anything like that, otherwise you got it all wrong. And of course at the bottom end. Okay, is there anything else I've done to this thing? Uh, well, well, you've been gone. Uh, well, there is actually. If you look carefully, you'll see one string tree up at the top there. Yeah, it's a fender one. <laughs> it will be. Oh, and I've got these uh, strap locks. Well, there it is. Fender infinity locks. There they are. I haven't fitted them on anything yet, but... I fitted them on the guitar and you will take your time with that won't you you're not gonna lift all your finish are you <laughs> yeah anything else I did I did actually put some screws into the uh, battery box and I did make very slight adjustments to the tremolo so that it's absolutely flat after all the adjustments the other adjustments that is yeah, seemed uh, seemed like a plan to me. It's all come out pretty well. In any case, I never intended to sit here for hours doing all the stuff because I've already been down it. I did it off camera because I haven't got all day. And uh, that's the net result. And to me, it's, uh, it's pretty much perfect, I think. So the plane's going to come up any second. How good it sounds through the amp out there, or amps, I might even go do a bit I don't know depends what mood I'm in but uh, I think it's going to come out right when you plug it in and I hope that the uh, series really allows you to go and get yourself a guitar like this from the bits yeah that's part of the trick you've got to you've got to get the bits and uh, end up with a great guitar now, this guitar wasn't hyper cheap, <laughs> but I didn't buy the more expensive stuff that I normally buy from Warmoth, by the way. I never really covered much of that. Uh, the neck was pre-made in the, the sale area, so I just bought it. Yeah. And the, uh, the body was, uh, I think, uh, again, in the sale area. I, oh, that one will do. Uh, so I didn't buy the dearest of anything. So what's it cost? 
I think this uh, probably about 1200 quid because of the taxis and the rest and the, you don't want to know and uh, yeah I think uh, for each 1200 quid including a case by the way which is sitting down there which is an SKB one yeah quite nice case looks very much like the fender plasticky one but uh, yeah I thought I'd have a change <laughs> Hopefully the whole series is going to inspire people to, to have a go. Yeah, that was the plan. Well, you know what? I'm not sure I will be doing any more. I've got more guitars than I've had at dinners, really. Uh, so I can't keep on making them. I'm not in the business to sell them. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll do some projects or something, but I don't know. I'm not entirely convinced there will be any more. Yeah, a bit long in the tooth. Oh, and by the way, there's a, a <clears throat> EVH 5153 Stealth. Supposed to have arrived, hasn't arrived. Supposed to arrive on the 22nd, which is a couple of days away from now. But I've already had an email saying it's not coming. <laughs> Well, why isn't it coming? Well, it's probably because of the virus thing and all the rest of it, and they're just not coming. So don't look for one. They're not out there. Uh, that was back ordered for a, a number of months, actually, and uh, should have been the next review after this. But now it won't be. Well, what, what will I review? Who knows, matey? Who knows? Will I review any? It's all getting a bit long in the tooth for me, this uh, YouTube stuff, and uh, I don't know. I might do the odd one or two reviews, or I might, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, enough of me. Go and have a look at my website. It's linked down inside, inside the text, that is. And there's lots of information about the whole series and the rest of it, and uh, yeah. Oh, I haven't fitted a tip on there yet. <laughs> It's in the post. So, yeah, that's it for now. And uh, the plane's going to come up. Whether it's good, bad or indifferent, well, it's the tones you're listening to. To be honest, I couldn't be bothered too much these days if somebody comes on, you need a sound, but, you know, you get them. Listen to the tones, don't listen to me. If I sound good, well, that's luck of the draw. <laughs> so until next time, Get out of here.
Okay, well what we've got going on now is uh, I've got the Marshall 1959 hand-wired head in there going through uh, a Boss uh, Wazza thingy <laughs> I'll call it that, an attenuator coming out of speakers, going through a particular mic that comes out and fixes itself as it goes and comes into the desk so you'll hear what comes into the desk behind me uh, from what I play now, yeah nothing special but just uh, I've got the uh, the mid turned right off and I'm on the treble now, I've got that drive through that amp so you'll be able to hear it it's intended to be uh, snarly <laughs> Okay, so I want to uh, just give you a bit, a bit of tone. <laughs> yeah, the sort of tone that you get off the Marshall with the, the bits and pieces on. So if we also kick in the, uh, well push it back to the treble and we'll kick in the, the mid boost. some idea of the, uh, the sounds as they are through that thing and that's that's turned up is that Marshall so I'll maybe go through another amp now okay so now there's some nice uh, clean tones coming out of a Mesa Boogie uh, Road King 2 so these are the, the sort of clean tones down to the neck 
Of course you'll get the neck turns, won't you? <laughs> back up and bring in the mid. It's new mid. Here I come in. <laughs> 